As the technology in our gaming systems have grown more and more powerful, games seem to be migrating to larger and more complex environments. Open world games are now probably more popular than they've ever been. But a game is not just open world because it has a huge map. It's open world when the player has some control over what they decide to do, what order they decide to do it in, and whether to skip some content entirely. That's where the idea of a side quest comes into play. Games with narrative, as RPGs and RPG light open world games tend to do, will have a main story with a defined beginning, middle, and end. For example, Frodo's main quest was to throw the One Ring into Mount Doom, which, by the way, one job, Frodo, just one. Side quests are small self contained activities that players can do in order to get away from the main quest. There are a lot of reasons to have side quests. A few of these reasons could be one, to fill out an amount of content, two, to introduce variety into the game, three, to prevent the player from getting bored and playing another game, and four, to help with things like world building or character development. In general, side quests are a good thing, but the gaming world is littered with tons of examples of really terrible side quests too. One particularly hateful example are those terrible radiant quests from Hello. Another settlement has sent word that they need our help. I'll mark it on your map. Go we'll find out what they need. Whether a side quest is enjoyable, interesting, or worthwhile depends on quite a few factors, but what about the factors that specifically make a side quest compelling? It turns out, actually, that we're compelled to do certain side quests because humans share certain psychological quirks. One really effective psychological factor is called the endowed progress effect. Basically, it means that if you start a task on someone else's behalf, they'll feel more compelled to finish the job. In games, that usually works by having an NPC automatically create an entry in your quest log. You're just walking along a path to do the next part of your main quest when some peasant shouts, Please, help me! Then you see an entry in your log for a new quest and maybe even the first check mark saying something like listen to the peasant's problem. Humans generally don't like to leave things unresolved and the only way to get that quest out of your log is to, well, finish it. Which brings me to another related method of making a quest into a compulsion, collections and sets. Anyone who's ever gotten into gotcha or collectible card games will tell you that it can really take over your mind if you let it. Most games these days tend to have some sort of collectible. These are but just two examples of the psychological methods that can lie behind compulsion in games, but don't get the idea that everyone is affected to the same degree. Personally, I just don't care for the collection stuff, but oh boy, I'm like Cartman with a I'm sailing away when an NPC drops a quest in my lap. I have to finish that quest. Using methods like these may make a side quest more compelling, but it won't necessarily make them fun. So another question that follows on from how to make people feel more compelled to finish a side quest is how those quests are designed in such a way that they are also enjoyable, so that they don't feel like a chore you have to do to get the good stuff. MMOs admittedly are the biggest sinners when it comes to cheap side quests that use psychological tricks to compel you, but are neither fun nor meaningful. MMOs have to do this, however, because they aren't sold once off to be played and then set aside. They have to keep you coming back playing for months, and sometimes even paying a subscription fee. This means stretching out content with filler, since good unique content takes time and money to make. Instead of just passing off mindless chores as side quests, you can make them a fun and engaging part of your game something that players want to do instead of feeling like they have to do them. If you're going to have collectibles, make them short with frequent rewards to make players feel good. If you can avoid it, don't make side quests that follow a formula or template. Make them resemble the uniqueness of the main quest, but in a shorter format. You can tell small, complete stories within the scope of the open world and the wider main quest. The Witcher games, especially the latest one, have honed the art of side quest storytelling to a fine art. There are side quests in The Witcher 3 that have better stories than some of the main stories of some AAA titles. Even then, questing is about reward, and your side quests need to have rewards that make players hungry for another side quest. Unique weapons or cosmetic items are good candidates. 
This is an area where Horizon Zero Dawn fell short for me. Often, you'd finish a substantial side quest only to get a box full of crafting materials as a reward, which is just a letdown. Side quest chains should also ramp up in a satisfying way to offer a variety of things to do. Games like GTA and Watch Dogs 2 are great examples at this. You can go racing, shooting, flying, or taking part in things like bowling. It's also truly incredible when a side quest ends up having various effects on the main story, so that they really create the illusion that you're having an effect upon the world that you're exploring. All of this really is just a template of what I've found as common themes when looking back at some of my favorite side quests in gaming. And while I only listed a few, there are a ton more good examples of great design when it comes to these often overlooked aspects of games. And that's why while I was developing this video, I had an idea. I, I just thought to myself, why end it there? Why not go further and deep dive side quests of all different types of games? Those are videos that I would really be interested in watching and creating. Why not expand on not only the quests that I felt nailed their design, but those that even missed the mark and how they could improve? And so, I wanted to end this video with an announcement of a brand new project that I've been developing called Detour Quest. This is a huge undertaking that I've been slowly developing for the past couple of months, while cataloging some of the most memorable side quests I have ever played, both good and bad. So look out for the first episode in the near future, and I hope you'll join me on this very interesting detour on my channel. Hey guys, I know it's been a minute, but I'm back for now. Uh, last month was definitely really crazy for me, but hopefully I'll be able to get back into my paces really soon. But maybe not too soon, because E3 is right around the corner and I have to get ready to fly out to LA to cover the event. So I'm definitely looking forward to that and I'll probably make a cool video about it when I get back. Uh, but I do appreciate you guys for stopping by and I hope you enjoyed my new video. And if you did, why not like the video and maybe share it with some of your friends. I also want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon backers. Thank you so much for all the support you guys have given me. And if you're interested in becoming a Patreon backer, you can check out the description below for a link to my Patreon. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you soon.